Good morning. All rise for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you, everybody. Before I begin, it is important for me to recognize that we are gathered here today on indigenous territory and land. This land is home to many First Nations communities, Inuit and Métis people. The land is governed under Treaty 13. And I want to remind all of our viewers online as well that the online space constitutes indigenous space as well as our connections run across these lands, seas, and skies. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ali Hirji, and I am going to be your host alongside Mark Dillon for the next five modules of Operation Defend the North. Before I begin, we'll be having some opening remarks, and I want to set the context for these opening remarks. About two months ago, the individual who will deliver her remarks gave a keynote that I was proud to attend where she asked a simple question. And that question was, what do I do as a CISO? Her response, I build allyship. I build partners. This speaks to the heart of this operation where we defend as one and prevail as many. I'm proud to be joined by Daniela Spagnolo CISO of the province of Ontario, and we'll welcome her to give some opening remarks to this conference. Daniela. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for that introduction, and that is true of who my brand is as a CISO. It is to build allyship and partnerships. We need to be a community. I work for the Ministry of Public and Business Service Delivery for the Government of Ontario. My team and I, we work for you. We are part of the Cybersecurity Division, and I am so honored to take part in Operation Defend the North today, and I want to uh, give my heartfelt and sincere thanks to CyberX for hosting today's event. We had another event that we similarly uh, participated in, another Defend the North, and it was very successful. So it's good to see these events that bring us together. And the importance of cybersecurity and the preparedness of these exercises couldn't be more poignant in today's day and age. It brings us all together. It's leaders. Each one of us are leaders across various sectors of Ontario. That cannot be understated. And through our collaboration and active resilient partnership in today's events, we are strengthening Ontario's collective digital resiliency. 
it is clear that we are in a time of disruption, of aggression, and we also are in a time of innovation and digital advancements. Cybersecurity for me and for you, I hope, remains a top priority. It is a top priority of the government of Ontario, I can assure you, because citizens, businesses, governments, we're all alike facing the increasing cyber threats. Cyber attacks have become increasingly sophisticated, increasingly relentless, especially with the increase of artificial intelligence. These cyber threats pose serious risks to all levels of government, the private sector, individual consumers, and especially to critical sectors, health, education, infrastructure. When you hear the numbers, like 40,000 reported instances of fraud, that affects our communities, and that's just only the stat from as of October 31st this year. In dollar values, it means $500 million in losses. That's a huge number. These cases include various crimes, I'm sure many of which you're familiar with, malware, ransomware, phishing scams, data breaches. And these costs of the bre breaches are so staggering across organizations and businesses, and breaches are becoming more disruptive, which is not only disruptive on the value propositions of the businesses delivering them, it's also very stressful for our teams collectively. The average cost of a data breach now has reached an average of $6.32 million as of 2024, in ac according to IBM. And unfortunately, I'm sure that number is going to grow. The consequences of rising cyber crimes have been felt by all, but also home here in Ontario, being 40% of, of the Canadian population. As cyber threats become more sophisticated, our government has recognized the need to be more prepared and be prepared against future attacks, be, pre pre be preparing our public assets, and to address the growing concerns regarding cybersecurity defense and data protection practices within the government and public sector alike. And so that's why some of you who may have followed some of the news articles lately, just last week, uh, the government of Ontario introduced landmark piece of legislation entitled the, Cy the Strengthening Cybersecurity and Building Trust in the Public Sector Act 2024. I am thrilled by this piece of legislation as it received royal assent and as it comes into force, it will empower our government to take the serious measures that we need to further support protections and enhancements for critical sectors like education and like healthcare, which support us all in our daily lives. We want to protect that personal data that is entrusted to us, as well as curb the impact of a cyber attack when they do occur. By requiring minimum cybersecurity protections in applicable public sectors, this bill will help our ministry's Ontario digital maturity and resilience and protect assets, uh, the public assets that we all lean on against future public uh, attacks. And part of today's kickoff of our session, I want to leave you with one key message. Cybersecurity is a collective responsibility. Whether you're attending today's session from the private sector, from the vendor community, from the public sector, or the broader public sector, each of us has a role to play in strengthening Ontario's di digital resil resilience. And I thank you for being allies here with me today. As we embark on today's scenario, I encourage you to make the most of today's session. Bring your expertise, bring your creativity, bring your critical thinking to the table. Remember, it's not just an exercise, it's an opportunity an opportunity to prepare, to improve, to strengthen the defenses that protect the people and institutions that we serve. Together, let's make Operation Defend the North a success and take one more step further together to securing an Ontario connected, resilient province. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Daniela. And Thank you, Daniela, and uh, on behalf of the advisory board, I, I thank you for attending, and more importantly, thank you for being uh, an ally, an advocate for diversity in cybersecurity, uh, and a voice that is always at the table, giving voices to others as well. We also recognize the importance of Bill 194, and given that you mentioned artificial intelligence, we recognize that AI doesn't just predict the future, it creates it, and we need to be a step ahead in terms of the types of attacks we are beginning to see. So with that, thank you very much, Daniela.
To our audience, once again, thank you for joining us. I'm going to use the next five to six minutes, maybe a little bit more, to set a little bit of the context before we have a promo video and then go into module one. Four very important housekeeping items. The first, this, as was indicated on the screen prior to the national anthem, is a hypothetical scenario. It is based on a very real possibility from an attack perspective, but none of the characters that you see or the companies that are referenced are real or exist. And if any references are made, those are completely unintentional, so you will forgive us, especially myself, if that happens. Feel free to flag it at any point of time for me. Number two, if you watched the previous Defend the North, you will notice a very subtle difference here. In each module, we, or at least the folks to my right and left, will assume roles in different organizations. The way this scenario is set up, it is a supply chain attack. It is based approximately a week-ish or two before the Christmas holidays. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it shortly. But in each module, the advisors on the table will take on a role within a company that is impacted by this attack. The attack escalates from module one and comes to a little bit of a conclusion, hopefully, by module five. Third, in terms of your engagement with the session, for those watching online, feel free to drop comments in the chat. I will do my level best to integrate them into my narrative. Each session, or should I say each module, runs for approximately 70 minutes. If I do sense that we have a little bit of time to take questions, I will open up the floor. But it is not a guarantee. It depends on how far we go along with this exercise. You are welcome to speak to us after the modules are complete. And lastly, please ensure that your cell phones are on silent. Please ensure that you maintain as much silence and decorum as possible. If you do need to exit and you need some assistance, there are some wonderful volunteers with the orange t-shirts that are here to assist you. For those that are watching online, there is a live chat button that uh, you can access and you can expect a response within two to three minutes. There is also a support email that has been provided to you. From time to time, if you need anything at all, you can feel free to meet me in breaks or meet any of the volunteers or any of the advisors that are present here today. Let's set the context now for what has happened and I'll discuss it a little bit with Mark. As I mentioned before, it's approximately a week to two weeks before the Christmas holidays. And at approximately 10 a.m., a situation begins to unfold. We're noticing that a whole group of people, many across Ontario, are currently at different retail stores and are unable to make payments. It's not like their bank accounts have been drained. It's just that while they're going to tap their card or insert their debit cards, whatever it may be, the transactions are not processing. There's widespread panic. It's the holiday season, lineups are growing, and this is not just impacting the retail stores. In this exercise, we begin to realize this is impacting the healthcare sector, the pharmacy specifically, governments, transport, and the cybersecurity industry in general. Mark, why did we pick this specific module or why did we pick this specific supply chain attack? What is the importance of bringing that to this exercise? So we wanted to create a scenario that's very real that could happen um, as we unfold it today. You'll see it's very likely that it's already occurred and okay. also that we, with, without the right amount of diligence and putting all the pieces together, like we talked about cybersecurity being uh, you know, it's a team sport. Everybody works together. Yep. And so because there's all these disparate pieces, when you have third and fourth parties, as well as the primary consumer, we need to think about the whole ecosystem together. Yep. And so that is, that's why we've selected that, and that's where we're going to unfold and see today. I'd like to take that a step further, because one of the things that we're doing is we will have some prompts. Can you tell us a little bit about the 
technical prompts that you will be bringing up and how are we expected to work with them? Right, so each organization is trying to figure out what's going wrong. The retail store is trying to figure out why are my terminals not working? We've got the institutions that are in the back end of that trying to figure out what's happening here. Is it our fault? Is there some system error? Is this a cyber event? How do we react? And as we go through it, we'll start to see technical evidence that we'll bring up. We'll start to go into the systems and start to look at what's happening in the back end and eventually, hopefully, get to a conclusion and resolve the issue. Okay. Along with the technical prompts, one of the things that we will be doing, and Mark will shed some light on this as well, is while we'll show you what we know, your standard logs, we'll show you what we're getting from the applications, we'll show you a lot of those details, we will also show you everything else that happens when an incident is unfolding. For example, an angry customer email, a very, very disjointed Teams chat, wrong information going from the operations team to the marketing team. And that really sets the context for what truly happens when you're experiencing an incident which steadily escalates into a breach and an attack. Mark, why does those set of prompts, why are they extremely important to running this exercise? I think it makes it real. When you're in one of these situations, an emergency, an emergency response situation, typically you need to get together and share information. Not everyone is an expert in every part of the business, so you need someone to come from you know, your analyst side, your business side, your finance side, and your technology side to paint the full picture. And this is what it really feels like in a real incident. I've been part of real incidents before, and what we're unfolding today is, I think, a true representation of what it's really like to be inside of a company that is trying to figure out how do I make sense of what's going on and what do I do next to make things better and not worse? Sounds good, Mark. I truly appreciate this. Mark, as we've spoken about this a lot and planned for this exercise over the last three months, I want to thank you for your dedication to this and I'm looking forward to the next few modules. As you've always said, smart people learn from their own mistakes. The really smart ones learn from the mistakes of others. And I'm hoping that all of you will learn from some of the mistakes that I make as I try to deal with this situation and try to bring it to some sort of a conclusion and to help us navigate this attack as it begins to unfold. Once again, my name is Ali Hirji and I want to welcome you again to Operation Defend the North. I'm going to take a short promo break where you'll see an introduction to the first module and the first module will then begin. Thank you and stay tuned. <laughs>